not the key. So yesterday during the initial teardown and inspection, I noticed that the impact hit the engine so hard it pushed down on the transmission. And in doing so, it actually bent and as you can see there cracked the transmission cross member. My intent was to go to the junkyard today and get everything I need for the power steering and the broken pulley gear um, so that I could get the motor running. But then I was worried, well, if it caused that much of an impact to bend that cross member, then I want to actually get that cross member bent back into place, weld up the cracks, reinforce it with some gussets, and then try and start the motor. Make sure there's nothing else I need because if this motor is completely shit, then I'm probably going to want to buy a donor vehicle and do a motor swap. And that will come with all of this shit. So I won't need to buy it. I'd really be pissed if I bought it twice. So the objective for today was to get out the cross member. The weather says fuck you. So, uh, Odd thing about Colorado though is we're so used to no humidity here that when it snows it actually feels, you know, it, I guess like right now it probably feels like what, 40 degrees, 45 you'd say? Realistically like Kenosha, this is a Kenosha 45, 50, yeah, huh. yeah. so I'm getting this thing out of here and uh, we'll see what we can do later. you can see here there's a couple of cracks and obviously in the stress points if you were to you know try and bend this thing the obvious areas are the most damaged a couple cracks there and you can see this is supposed to be flat so I may put a bunch of weight on this and try and get it as flat as possible once I get it flat and in place I can weld all these cracks up and maybe weld a piece of bar across both sides under this flange here and that would prevent this from happening again also some tacks on the ends of these uh, these multi-layer steel pressings and then once you tack all those together then uh, it shouldn't flex anymore but clearly out of flat so I'll do that uh, gotta figure out a way to press down on it Get it nice and flat and then go from there. After much hammering with an assortment of tools, it is back to flat. So the next step would be to take it in the back, polish everything up where it's cracked along the edges, anywhere that needs to be welded, throw a bunch of tacks on it, maybe even throw in some reinforcement gussets to prevent this from happening again. And then put it back in and then we should be able to start this beast with a battery hopefully so now we've got it nice and flat enough we're gonna clean up all the areas we want to weld and then we're gonna weld them Simple enough.
ain't pretty, but nobody's gonna see it anyway. And it's strong, that's what matters. So we're gonna let this cool, stick it back under the Jeep, bolt it back up, hope everything lines up the way it's supposed to. I think it will line up just fine. And then uh, maybe start the Jeep, we'll see. All right, we got the cross member in and out. Fuck. Now, let's see if she'll start. Hopefully. That is not the key. $500 Jeep, bitches. So now the next step would be, uh, luckily there's a ton of Cherokees at the local junkyard because F and Jeep tends to buy them all and um, they want to charge retail for their parts. But if they're still at the junkyard, I can get them for stupid prices. So I got to get that bracket right there. I got to get a power steering bracket, power steering pump. Oh, water pump. And then uh, that'll be it. Like if you like, subscribe if you want to see more as soon as they're uploaded, and as always guys, keep on modding.